Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Amen. Let me say it again because now y'all looking at me like you're upset. It's harder to, watch this, it's harder to put me in check than it is for me to get you straight. Amen. And boy, they come in amen like popcorn here, <laughs> there. It's easy to give a lot of rules, a lot of orders, and get everybody straight, but how hard it is for me to put a muzzle over my own self. Read it again, Deacon, because I'm not getting much help. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Proverbs 16 and 32. Listen. He that is slow to anger yes. is better than the mighty. Uh -huh. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Watch for those that are mighty, but have a mighty hard time controlling their own behavior. I'm just letting it sit. Thank you. Somebody said, ouch. <sighs> go back, Deacon. Let's go. Because they're not going to be my friend today. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And, and this is what the church needs. You want to know why? Because we keep talking about how much we love God, but we still haven't learned how to love each other. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Come oh, on. Yes. Say amen today. Oh, yeah. Go back, Deacon Romans. Where were we? Romans chapter 12. Listen, go back to verse 16. Come on. Romans 12 and 16. Listen. Be of the same mind, mm -hmm. one toward another. Yes. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Come on. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Come on. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, if Oh! Here is the scripture that his sister quoted. Amen. She said, I tried everything I can to forgive. Went to my sister. She didn't receive me. But didn't the Bible say, make peace as much as possible? Uh, read, you can read that scripture again? Let's if, get an understanding. If it be possible, uh -huh. as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Stop. What does if it be possible mean? Yes. Right. That's what we were saying. You would think that if it be possible means do everything in your power to make peace with the person. I got a question today. How much power do you have over the other person? If it be possible, don't mean if you can. Huh. Did y'all hear what I just said? Amen. If it be possible, doesn't mean if I can. Read it again, Deacon. Let's get an understanding. If it be possible, as much as life in you. How? If it be possible, as much as life within you. Now, I got a question. What lies in you? If you have the Holy Ghost in you, then your ability to have peace surpasses what you could do if you did not have the Holy Ghost. Amen. So instead of saying, if I can't, well, Pastor, I can't make them. See, what you're, feeling, what you're missing is this. The peace that you're going to make is not with them. It's going to be a peace you're going to make with God, and that peace with God is going to give you a peace with yourself. Amen. And now you understand this kind of a peace. When folk don't like you, Amen. when they don't want to give you a chance, because some of us in here have tried our whole life to convince people of who we are. Can I just talk for a minute? Amen. Have you not noticed that some people don't like you and they don't even know you? Come on now. Come on. I mean, can I just talk real? You've been married, I've been married. Ten years you thought you knew somebody. Oh, I'm talking now. <laughs> and one day you meet another person. 
And sometimes you're the other person that somebody's had to meet. So if you've been married your whole life and found out some stuff 15 years later, how do you expect somebody in church who only sees you once Come on. a week in a quick study to know who really you are? Amen. Can I tell you, we've been trying to convince people of who we are, a bunch of people who don't even know who they are. And they could never recognize who you are or what is in you or what God has done for you. Amen. And you need to learn to say what they don't know ain't my business. Right. I am in the business of loving God, but I can't love God if I don't love them. Y'all quiet today. Y'all quiet today. Come on, dig and read the verse again. We got to go. If it be possible, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live, live peaceably with all men. Yes. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Avenge. Now here's another key word. The first word was recompense. That's right. Now we have another word, avenge. That's right. Recompense means to pay back. What does avenge mean? Huh? Come on, bro. What'd you say? All right. Give me, give, give me one more. Somebody else add to what he just said. What does avenge mean? Not revenge, avenge. All right, avenge is dealing with when we try to vindicate ourselves or when we try to persuade people almost with an argumentative-like explanation about letting people know who we are. Mm. And it goes like this, do you know who I am? Yeah. I guess y'all ain't never told nobody, you must don't know who you playing with. Yeah. <laughs> You done met the right one now. And, not the word. <laughs> and the only thing that's talking is not a saint. That's an old man screaming out in pride. It's an ego driven, come on somebody, yeah. to tell you that you're dealing with the devil part of me and not the God part of me. Mm. Oh, I, I got church folks telling you, you know who I am. No, I don't know. Which one is it? Is it the old man or is it the new man? <laughs> I ain't gonna get no help, but today I wonder who does most of the talking when somebody has done this evil. Is it the old man wow. or is it the new man? Wow. Ouch. You know who you messing with? I don't. You're just as bipolar. That's what it is. Come on, Deacon Reed. Amen. Dearly beloved. Dearly beloved. Avenge not yourselves. Yeah, help. Uh, but rather give place unto wrath. Stop. So if he says, don't vindicate yourself. Don't you explain. Don't try to break down for people and tell them who you are, but rather give place unto wrath. Hold on. Somebody may have the wrath. Who has that? Look at the translation you have. It'll say give place to the wrath. Now let me ask you this. What do you mean give place to wrath? Don't you vindicate, but get out of the way and give place to who? To work wrath against those that have evil have done evil against you. Amen. The main reason why God can't do what he needs to do is because we're so busy putting out a hit list and call ourselves save of people we want God to get back. Amen. And now you know why the Bible says pray for them that despitefully, but you know why he's telling us that? Because it might be your own husband or wife. Oh, we want to call God in on our husband, don't we? On our wives. We want to call him in on our spouse, don't you? Oh, y'all ain't never said, God going to deal with you. <laughs> God going to deal with you. You ain't never heard that one before? <laughs> God's going to get you. Huh? You what the Bible said. Listen good. I'm just talking. We are almost done. We done shouted today. I just want to go over this because this is going to bless your life. Watch this. Watch this. He says, don't you do it. Give over to God. But then when you give it to God, don't you direct God into how to take care of it. Let God do it and you get out of the way. That's right. That's right. And let me tell you why. Sometimes your enemy that you got to pray for is in your bedroom. Oh. 
And if you're telling God break his leg, he won't make it to work and y'all gonna lose everything. <laughs> so what you ought to do? Pray. Yeah. Now hold on. Hold on. So here's what I tell couples all the time. Be careful when you call God in on your marriage to get the other one. You know what I found out? If God is a just God, when he comes into the house, he's not going to just deal with me. You want him to come? He on the way. Now when he gets in the house, everything that's in the house is in trouble. The dog, the ch cover the children, everybody is in trouble. Because if God is a just God, he's going to not just deal with me, he's going to deal with you. Amen. And if I got, hold on, and I know you think you're holy, he ain't going to do nothing but get me, but if he got the same report about you that I got about you, he's going to deal with you too. Amen. Amen. So you know the best thing to do? Pray. Yeah. For each other. Somebody say amen. Amen. Oh, Y'all ain't going to talk today amen. because it's easy to find fault in each other. It's easy to point the finger. But do we have any mature saints in here that can say, sometime I got to check myself before I wreck myself. Yes, right at the door. Amen. Oh, yeah, we, we're just hypocrites. Come on, y'all, we're hypocrites. Amen. We pray loud about other people. God, save them. God, change their evil, stony heart. God, make a way. You know, sister so-and-so always coming in with division. You know, I rebuke the devil. And then when we pray about us, we start, mm. oh. <laughs> And we don't talk as loud when we're praying about us as we do when we're praying about others. Because it's easy to help somebody else get right. But Lord knows it takes the Holy Ghost for us to see our fault. Amen. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I've seen it many times. Church testimonies. I want to thank and praise the Lord today. <laughs> Running for my life. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I, that's, a, oh, that's an apostolic. <laughs> Running for my life. Jesus on the main line. And church, I want to tell you about, I want to tell you about last night and I was walking with the Lord after church and this old man came up to me, one but the devil trying to come on to me and I told him I rebuke you because I'm single and saved. <laughs> and everybody's got the testimony of the man that they didn't want. But we don't have many saints that will testify about the one that almost got you. <laughs> And that's the one you don't testify about because that, oh, come on, somebody. Anybody can rebuke the one that you're not attracted to, but what you gonna do about the enemy that you like? Oh, what you gonna do? <gasps> so you know what we do? We bury each other and make excuses yeah. for ourselves. The Bible says it this way. We strain at a net. Y'all ever heard that scripture? We strain to swallow a net of somebody else's fault. But we can shove a whole tree branch mm. of our problems and swallow all of that. In other words, a net you can't put up with of somebody else's stuff. <laughs> but you want everybody to have mercy for you. For you. Yeah. Deacon, come on, because they're getting upset with you. Amen. <laughs> come on, I, feel, I thought I was going to shout today. We did. Now let's get some words that'll help us grow. Amen. Come on, Deacon, let's go. Next scripture. All right, next verse. Oh, my bad. I'm going to show you something. This is going to really bless your life. Amen. Verse 19. Come on. Dearly beloved. Dearly beloved. Avenge not yourself. Don't you do it, but. But rather give place unto wrath. Let God do what he's going to do. For it is written, vengeance is mine. You, see, if you move out of the way, God will do it. Can I tell y'all why we don't like God to get people back? Well, number one, we think it takes long. And number two, we want to be able to see it when they suffer. Yeah. Nobody ain't going to talk real. Oh, yeah. God, I want to see them choke on the thing, man. I want to see them come crumbling down and they calling me and begging me for forgiveness. And God is saying, I'm not in the business of entertaining your ego. I'm in the business of saving folk. And I'm not here to embarrass them. I'm not here to make a show of them. Amen. I am here to revive them. Yeah. So the Bible says, when I do it, you don't have to see it. Amen. But the reason we don't want to trust God to bring vengeance is because we want to witness when the tire go flat. Mm. Y'all, come on, say amen. amen. Give me the next verse. Come on, Deacon. 
Uh, for it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay. Yes, he will. Save the Lord. Save God. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Now, I'm going to show you that. If you're in, here go the part we're really going to get mad about. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. Look, if, look how quiet he got. Mm. <laughs> if, your, if, that, if your hater is, if he get hungry, fix him a plate. I ain't going to fix nobody. I don't even like me. I ain't, I ain't going to do nothing. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says if your enemy is hungry, feed him. That's right. Stop the tongues. Stop the jumping. Stop the clapping. Stop the singing. And learn to obey God's word. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. Well, ho, ho, why? Amen. If he thirsts, give him drink. And? For in so doing thou shalt heap coals. How many of y'all heard this one growing up? Oh, yeah. When you do this, you heap coals. Of fire. Now, how many of y'all heard that scripture before? Heaping coals on somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, y'all tell the truth. You never knew what that meant. Well, I know it make them hot. <laughs> no, sir. Why did God tell us to heap coals? That when we do good to each other, we're heaping coals. On the person that has done wrong. Why? Anybody know why? What does that mean? So we can stop walking around for 40 years in church and not know why God told us to put coals on somebody's head? Go ahead, Pop. Oh, okay. Now, now watch this. He said, You'll get more stars in your crown, and there's some truth to it, but how and why? How and why? I want you to get this. You want to know how and why? In the Bible, when they would have to prepare heat and dinner, they would run out of live coals. Live coals is what they used to cook and keep the house warm. Amen. When they ran out, they would go to the neighbor's house who would keep live coals. The, live, the neighbor would take the live coals, put them in a bucket. Amen. Are you listening? He would put the coals in the bucket and he would give you enough Coals so that you could go home and feed your family and heat your home. I'm so glad to see uh, the McLaughlin family with me today. Amen. Amen. Please forgive me. I didn't. It's so good to see you. Can, can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? So why is the Bible telling me that when I do good to my enemy, I'm putting coals on their head? Amen. You see, Putting coals on your enemy's head is a symbol of you meeting a need that they have, that they don't even know that they have. It's a need for love. Now watch this. When you give them the coals while they're treating you like a dog, you have no idea that you're meeting their need but it's almost like a sweet revenge. Because the one that hates you, God is using you to bless them. And the Bible, y'all should have shouted right there. The Bible says it this way, goodness to overcome evil. That's right. Huh? So what should I do? Love my enemy. Okay, y'all are quiet today, amen? Amen. Uh, uh, feed them if they're hungry. And I've I never seen y'all quite so, everybody's just, okay. Amen. Uh, see, that's the real word that we have, we're not preaching. You know why? Because the Bible said the greatest thing is love. He says uh, we got to love each other and that the greatest commandment, if you want to prove how spiritual you are, it ain't about how many scriptures you quote, how much Bible history you got, how much wisdom and everybody call your name and stand up when you come in the room. The evidence of who you are in God is by how you love. And the Bible don't just say love. It doesn't say love for each other. It says your love toward each other. A lot of us got love for people but we don't know how to show love toward love for is general but love toward is an expression I wonder if anybody got enough Holy Ghost to express love and not just talk love a lot of people say they love you but you're all pastor I love I just love pastor I hear you I hear you maybe you don't love me you love what I do 
and when I don't do what I do, maybe you won't love me anymore. But when I have love toward, it's no longer love stands still. It's love that is active. It's love that is expressed. It's love that'll give. It's love that'll pick somebody up. It's love that'll bless somebody going through a hard time. It's no, y'all ain't hearing me today. That's the Holy Ghost. And that's real discipleship. That's a real disciple. When you can treat somebody good that's treated you like a dog. When you can open up your home to people that'll talk behind your back. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. But I'll preach this one if I gotta preach it by myself. I wonder if there's anybody spiritual enough that can reach down to somebody that's not where you are and say, honey, you ain't got to like me. I'm going to love you anyhow. Yeah. Oh, we talk that low stuff. But I wonder, can you really love people? Can you really love people that don't look like you? People that don't come from the same background. People that don't have the same education. I wonder, can you love people that have issues in the mind and people that have an uh, ugly smell and people who don't have as much money as you think they ought to have? I wonder, church, is there any real saints that's got enough Holy Ghost that's spiritual enough to catch a woman at the well while everybody else is pointing out her faults yes. and tell her, let me introduce you to a God that is able to meet every need. I wonder, do you have enough God in you that I say, even when you curse me, I'll bless you. Even when you mistreat me, I'll pray for you. Yes, oh, I wish I had a prayer church in here today. Amen. Oh, anybody got it like that today? Deacon, give me the next question. We got to go. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Do you believe in missed opportunity when it comes to being with someone because they didn't speak up or talk to the person when the time occurred to do so? Or do you believe it is God's will to bring people together with who they should be with? I guess what I'm asking is, do you believe what's meant for you is for you through God's will? Because he already knows our actions beforehand. Please share your thoughts. Thanks and God bless. Okay, now I, I'm going to have to make this a message another day because this is good. Amen. But I'll give you a quick answer. The ultimate will of God is that he knows all things. Amen. Within that, yes, you can't miss an opportunity for you. Meaning, let's be honest. One day I'll do a teaching on soulmates. I mean, who told us there's such thing as a soulmate? What you get that from? I'm not saying that it isn't, but where do we get it from? I found out that soulmate is whoever we choose. Amen. And if you argue with me, I'll argue with you and say, you told me that was your soulmate. Why aren't you still with her? <laughs> huh? Is that, brother, that makes sense? I mean, come on, talk to me. Amen. So one day, and I'm not against the concept of a soulmate, but I want us to understand <laughs> that we say these things and we really don't know what we're saying. Oh, the Lord gave me this man. Did he change his mind? Do I believe God has ordained for all things to be? Yes. But he knows. Now it's for us to find out. Amen. So we'll talk more about what's called a soulmate. The truth is we like what we want and we choose what we want. Amen. Amen. And whatever mess you got, that's the mess we chose. Amen. And once again, I ain't going to get nobody to help that's me real. today. That's real. Am I telling a lie or am I telling the truth? truth? The mess you got, you need to leave God out of that. Talking about the Lord brought that mess to you. That's the mess you chose. And most of the mess we chose is because we are a mess ourselves. Amen. Oh, I wish I had time with that. Because the truth is, until I get me fixed, I'm going to make choices that reflect the broken me. Yeah. So I need God to fix me so my chooser will get... Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me today. Right. God, you got to fix what I want because I don't even know what to want. I don't even know what to desire. You got to show me what to want. Yes, oh, my God. When the prodigal son left home, he said, Lord, give me, he told his father, give me everything. Went to go be in the pig pen, didn't he? Mm. When he came back, he said, Lord, not give me, Lord, make me. And that's what God will do with you in your life. That's what he do with me. You know what he do? He'll cause us to stop saying, Lord, give me that. That's what I want. And when you get finished going through enough hell, you'll stop saying, that's what I want. You'll say, Lord, what do you have for me? Because right. I ain't got no more years to throw away with a bunch of jokers that ain't going nowhere. Haven't you realized you chose a lie long enough? Why don't you go to God this time? That's right. Amen. That's for another time. Give me the next one. Are there any spiritual roots to allergies and sinus issues? Yes, all allergies and most sinus issues do relate to hurt and fear. Allergies are almost always related to fear, just like asthma. 
Are you listening? Amen. It is a proven fact, not even just a spiritual fact. Even in the natural doctors, they teach that fear causes asthma. It's a natural response. Fear is a spirit. Stop thinking that asthma is something normal. Allergies are reactions. Now let me say this. There are different kinds of allergies. If you have food allergies, you may want to consider this. Some people are suffering from food allergies, and what they need is they need God to touch them in a way where he can restore the joys of life. When your joys of life have been taken from you, things that you would normally enjoy like food, they now cause an allergic reaction. Many of us don't know that some things that make us sick is because we're already sick inside. Yeah. The Bible says when we hold bitterness and hurt inside of us, our food will change to poison as we consume it. Did you know that? Yeah. So some of us are sick because of what's going on and we're not dealing with it. And that's why even when your mama used to eat, your old big mama would say, get yourself together. You're going to make yourself upset before you eat your food. Because eating your food, and watch this, consuming while you're hurt, while you're grieving, it can change to poison in your stomach. If you don't know what we're teaching, we do teach the spiritual roots to sickness, and it is so. Amen. All right? I wish I could go more into it, but that's a quick answer. A lot of what's going on with us physically is a result of how we feel. Any quick questions about that? Uh-huh. All of us. Your asthma came in through the situation that you had to deal with. And when it came in, trauma caused you to have to breathe hard. Let me tell you something. When you, get, when you become afraid, what happens? Quickly. Tell me physically what happens to your body when you become afraid. First of all, a chemical kicks in. What is it called? Okay, adrenaline and what? Now watch this. Some of us have been through so much hell in our life, our body never got away. Our body has never had a chance to be relieved from that constant addiction to adrenaline and to yeah. that drive. Yeah. We live in overdrive. That's a spirit. Okay? When you go through certain traumatic situations, anxiety will come over you. Anxiety is fear. Fear is worry. All of those things are spirits. It is real. The Bible said God has not given me a spirit of fear. Amen. You lose somebody, you go through a traumatic situation, fear will come in. I promise you. Somebody gets to you, get shot. Somebody comes after you. You've been hurt. Um, somebody done something to you. You've been raped. Anything.